Off Grid Africa rolling out. Tyna, we're going in five minutes. Let's hope nothing terrible happens like the lorry breaks down in the middle of the motorway. Hey, stop! Stop! A lock on his wheel, so now we're stuck in the side of the road. We haven't even left Wolfisk yet. Been here for two months now, setting up the various parts of uh, this operation. Management, staff, location, living quarters, machines, building the rolling circus, building the rolling toolbox. I believe that tomorrow we're kind of ready to go now. We have a team. We're continuing to add on to this team. The idea is to start off with one or two sites and then quickly move into parallel work on three, four sites at the same time. So we definitely should be able to commission 10 to 15 sites every single month. Off-grid Europe, off-grid Africa, rolling out. The only problem is does he rip the corner off the wall? Hey, stop! Stop! How close was that? With the rolling circus and the small fleet of flatbed trucks ready to go, we waited to be collected by a police escort who will accompany us on the 250 km trip to the Kafrine region and avoid us needing to stop at numerous police checkpoints along the way. We're finally on the go. We're going to Kafrine today. Let's hope everything will fall apart. Careful with the speed bumps. Just careful with the speed bumps. We have no suspension in the back. Please, please be careful. What we didn't know is that we were part of a much larger convoy of other lorries that were waiting for us to join them at the main road from Dakar at Rufisk. So look at that. We're like 30 minutes into this trip right now and basically we get another escort here. Another lorry is going to be an escort and that's got a lock on his wheel. So now we're stuck in the side of the road. We haven't even left Rufisk yet. It's crazy. As no slow moving traffic is allowed on the new toll road that goes two thirds of the way to Kafrine, having a police escort allowed us to overtake other traffic on the regional roads that we were taking. At least it did until our convoy expanded further. Well, it seems like our escort has taken a new interesting turn. Now we are now accompanying two giant caterpillars on our wagon train here. Standing next to the wheel here, quite a large machine and it's significantly slowing us down. We're not going to arrive until 12 o'clock tonight. We've got still 190 kilometers to go and we're moving at 20 kilometers an hour. Just look at the size of that thing, it's enormous. Now all of a sudden our truck doesn't look very big anymore. It's going to take a long time. The stress is finished? Yes. Good. Because this is slow. Slowly. Many more stops today. <laughs> Uh, one of the trucks needs to refuel, so so now we're just blocking traffic. Actually, I think what happened was we just released about seven kilometers of traffic, which is now past us. So I think that's a big relief. Parked in the middle of the road, basically. <laughs> yeah, that's what we're doing. It's fun. Anything is fun. Right, let's get going now. Right, we're in Kaolak now. Still got another 80 kilometers to go. Police escort is just gonna leave us and then we're just gonna have to find our own way. We just cross into this other state. And then in theory, we should be fine as long as we don't get stopped. And if we stop, we just have to, you know, pay our way onwards. It's gonna be a long day. So here we are right now. Quarter past nine, we have a flat tire. We hit a few massive holes in the road and it just demolished two tires instantly and then we drove a few hundred meters and then they were just completely shredded. Thankfully we stopped next to somebody who can repair tires. Well, we have arrived at 20 to one. Let's find out now where we're gonna set up, I guess. Project number one, let's get on with it. We arrived at the first village of Amdalai and Bulup at 2 a.m., 14 hours after leaving our office at Sangal Khan. We still had to set up our living container in order to provide accommodation to the 20 team members that we had, so we set up one side of the living container and filled it with mattresses. How you doing, Finn? Good. Are you excited about tonight? Yeah. Where do you think you're going to sleep? Behind you in the car. <laughs> behind me? No way. No, I'm not behind you. The car behind you, idiot. Yeah. 
The goal of our first day on site was to get the base set up ready for people to sleep properly and to be in a position to start work on the container. The group of villagers arrived with tools to clear the work area of the remnants of last year's corn harvest. So while Babakar went to the nearest town to get food and supplies, the team's spirits were kept up by Abdul's rounds of tea and banter, while the living container was assembled, electricity set up, a covered workspace on the trailer was made, and we started emptying the first container of the solar goods ready to start work. Well, this is first night in Hotel Rolling Circus. <laughs> Oh, yours is much more cozy than mine. Are you happy? It's the Ritz. It's the Ritz. First night sleeping in the rolling circus, and it was really good. People just sleeping everywhere still. I mean, of course, we have too many crew right now for, for the rolling circus, so they're meant to be sleeping in the village, but it seems like even though people have got options to sleep in the local hall down there, people are just sleeping, yes, you can see, in a bed just like that. Or I've got another guy over here, he's actually sleeping in, in JCP. <laughs> right there, sleeping. That's where he slept last night. You could have also slept in a bed if you want to do Today, we're going to start putting in the screws and we're going to get on with the work. Join us next time as the team gets familiar with the ground screw system, which we're using instead of the traditional sand and cement as a footing for the container, PV mounting and fence posts. Mm -hmm.